Welcome to Taylor Wells Pricing Channel. Today I'm going to talk about the best pricing strategy for a new product you're about to launch in the market. In this video, I'm going to help you to work out the best price for a new product, a price your customers are willing to pay for, and a price that makes you more revenue and more margin. Okay, let's get started. Did you know that it's much more common for businesses to undercharge customers for a new product than overcharge them? In fact, we estimate that 80 to 90% of Australian retailers set prices for their new products that are way too low. And only 10% of Australian retailers set prices for new products that are high enough to be profitable. You may be thinking, well, that's not such a big deal. All you need to do is just sell more stuff, or if that doesn't work, increase prices later on. But it's not as simple as that. Because when you undercharge a new product offering, even just by 1% less than the best possible price, you've actually just given away about 8% of its potential operating profit, which means lots of hard earned money down the drain. You see, an excessively low reference price might accelerate a new product's penetration of the market, but the resulting lower margins forgo the future profits a higher price would have captured once a customer base had been established. So in this video, we're going to walk through some key steps of the pricing process so that you can work out what the best pricing strategy for your new products is without losing your hard-earned revenue, profit, and price positioning in the market. Step one, you've got to create detailed customer personas. I'm starting here because before you set any prices, you've got to get a very clear understanding of your ideal customers in absolute terms. This means working out how much your ideal customers are worth to you in dollars and cents. Essential details you'll need here are the potential size of your customer base, acquisition costs, lifetime value, willingness to pay in different growth cycles and segments, purchasing power of your customers. You also need to know who exactly you're targeting. What do they like about your products? What don't they like about your offer? Are they the key decision maker? Who else is influencing the decisions when they buy? Now, if you're not sure about how to build out your customer personas, I've put together a checklist in my article on the best pricing strategy for new products and consumer goods. To get this checklist, go to taylorwells.com.au, best pricing strategy for new products. Okay, next stage in the pricing process is a value driver analysis. After you've understood your target market in absolute terms, you've got to find out what your customers really value and how much this is potentially worth to you as well. So how do you do this? Well, you need to ask your customers lots of good questions, revealing how they think you solve their problem. You've got to create surveys with well-crafted questions that will not only give you a wide range of responses, but also reveal key customer and pricing insights. I also recommend here meeting, talking and observing your ideal customers as well. The next step, you've got to analyse people's answers in detail. Start to categorise their statements to tease out unique value drivers for each customer persona. Next, translate these value drivers into quantifiable monetary estimates. To do this, You've got to think about how your product's category impacts your customer's costs, revenues, or if it's a consumer product, lifestyle. Now what you're trying to do here is pinpoint the maximum price your ideal customers would pay if they fully recognized the product's value to them and were motivated to purchase it. The value driver analysis is not the final invoice price you charge, it's the price ceiling, the maximum price you could charge. 
Pricing tiers will naturally begin to emerge from this analysis, so stick with it. Step three, now it's time to figure out the right price metric for your product. A price metric is essentially what you charge for. Is it per user, per visit? A simple price metric, for example, could be a price per milligram of active ingredients in a capsule, a price per milliliter of milk in a bottle, price per person, phone plan, a price per minute, call charge. Now to get the right price metric that fits your new product, I recommend you follow this criteria. Make sure your price metrics tracks the differences in value across segments. Remember, price metrics based purely on units purchased can be limiting because they don't allow you to set different prices for the same offer across different customer groups. Point two, make sure your price metric tracks differences in cost to serve. If the cost to deliver a product or service to a customer exceeds the cost of measuring, monitoring and charging for differences in its usage, charge for it. The customer is getting real value for free if you don't. Point three, make sure your price metric is easy to understand. If your customers don't understand how you charge, they won't buy from you. Point four, make sure your price metric is better than your competitors. Strong price positioning in the market is attractive to potential customers especially when your products are pretty much the same as your competitors. Point five, make sure your price metric aligns with the needs of your customers. Now to understand their needs, I'll just talk briefly about the concept of value in use and value at risk. And I'll go into more detail about this concept later in a later video. But to summarize for now, Value in use is the value customers get from using the actual product, its tangible value. Value at risk refers to the amount of risk the customer is willing to carry if they didn't buy stuff from you, its intangible value. Okay, now we get to the final stage of the pricing process, which is actually setting the invoice price itself. Now to set a price, you've got to start by collecting basic price volume data and analyze it. Pricing managers call this price elasticity modeling. Your pricing model will help you to determine how your customers respond to different price points at different stages of growth. This is known as price sensitivity analysis. Using past data is fine if you have it, but if you don't have any data, you'll need to generate this data, but under controlled conditions. To do this, you need to trial different price points. I recommend using the monetary estimations you did in your value driver analysis as the price ceiling and your analysis of your fixed costs as your price floor. I highly recommend you watch my video on four common pricing strategies to understand the differences here. So there you have it, a complete walkthrough of all the key stages of the pricing process. There's no reason you should be undercharging a new product anymore. It's very hard to take up back a price when it's out there in the market. Your product's reference price tells the market what you really think your new product is worth. If you would like to know more about how a world-class pricing manager sets prices for new products and services, or want to brush up on your pricing skills and knowledge, I've put together an ebook below. Alternatively, subscribe to Taylor Well's pricing channel now to watch our latest videos on pricing as soon as they are released.